Hello everyone, Code Queen Ayeli. In this tutorial, I am going to show you a code that I created to auto-download an image that's been uploaded into a Wix code database collection. But before I get started, please subscribe. The button is down below. <laughs> and if you have any questions, please reach the code group, totally codable, so that way other people can assist you and I can assist you as well. The reason I ask to go to the group and post your questions there is because I get hundreds of messages with the exact same questions and probably the answer is already waiting for you there. Now let's get to the tutorial site. You will find a link to the site in the video description below. When you get to the site, you will see something like this and some images. Yes, I pick the images myself. <laughs> Once you have an image that you like, you click the download button. It redirects you to a dynamic page. Do you see this little pop up here? The save pop up window thingy <laughs> um, automatically comes up on your browser. There's no need to right click an image. As soon as you land on there, it triggers it, it opens it up and it also has a name for the image itself. There's something special about this tutorial site. If you notice the big large image, you cannot zoom in and out and move it back. I chose the image to be the background of the entire dynamic page. And at the same time, if you notice wherever I click, I can't right click. I can try to take a screenshot if I wanted to, but I added some letters here. So that way if a screenshot was taken, well, then this will come up and it'll be really hard to take that off, right? So if you hit the back button, you can choose another image and the next one comes up. Feel free to download any images that you want. They all have my logo on it. I don't know what good they would be for you, but go ahead. I don't mind sharing. Now, if you're an advanced coder and you already know how to manipulate pieces of Wix code, go ahead and click on the code tab. You'll find the code there, copy and paste it onto your dynamic page and change the words that need to be changed. For everyone else that needs a little bit help, open up your editor. I'm going to show you all of the elements and pieces that I use to create that exact tutorial site. We're going to add a title. I'm going to drag and drop anyone. Now to display the images, I'm going to add a repeater. So I'm going to go to lists and grids. I'm going to select the first repeater. If you don't know how to work repeaters, please watch my repeater video on YouTube. I'm going to click on manage items. I'm going to delete the extra items. I just want one. I'm going to delete all the excess info that I don't need. This is my one item. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make the image larger. I'm going to center my button. Now I'm going to check the settings of this image. I don't want anything to happen when they click on it. So I'll change it to nothing happens. I'll keep the original proportions. And then I'm going to click on the repeater again. Click on the layout. I'm going to center it. That way, if I have one, two, or three, it'll e space them out evenly. Still clicking on the repeater, I'm going to click on stretch, and I want to stretch it full screen. I'm going to add a little bit of margins so it has a little bit of cushion on the side. And now my repeater is ready to be connected to a database. Because I don't have one, I'm going to turn on the developer tools, and I'm going to create one now with you. I'm going to open up the side structure panel, click on add new collection, and I'm going to name it gallery. For this tutorial, it's public information. So I'm going to click on settings, edit permissions, and make sure that it says anyone can read the content. It doesn't matter who creates it or who updates it. For right now, we're just showing and displaying a gallery. I have one column already. The field is called title. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to call it image. The field type will be an image. 
Then I'm going to add one that's called note. It'll be a text field. And I just need those three. Now that I have these three, I need to fill in my database with the images, the title, and the note. So I can do it one of two ways. One, I can add information here in the sandbox, or I can go to the live database. Now, this is the Rick's dashboard for this site, and this is where you find the databases. If I click on database now, notice that I have none. So in order to add live data in a live database to display on the site, I have to publish the site first because it doesn't know that I've created this just yet. So if I try to add information through the dashboard or if I try to sync it to the live database, well, there's no live database to sync to. So right now I am ready to publish. Now that I've published it, I can sync my information. It's blank now, so let me do this. Test one, test two, test three, test four. Now I'm gonna select four images. So from the images that I have saved in my account, I will select one for each item. Now that I have all four images, I can add note. For example, this is my one note. Here is number two. This is three, hello four. So I've added a title, an image, and a note. I've added it through the sandbox, so now I would have to sync this information to copy all of these items to the live database. So let me send it over to the live database. Now they are in the live database. Let me go to my Wix dashboard and check it out. I'm gonna refresh this page. Now that I've refreshed it, not only do I see the database that I've published, but I notice that there are four items in there. If I click on there, now I can see the items that I've added. So I can add more items through here. Let's add two more. Let's do Hello World and Hi Nayeli. I'm going to add two more images. It still accesses the same images from my account. You don't see the images that you're going to use, simply upload them into your account. This is the world last title. So I've already added all of the items that I'm going to be displaying on my test tutorial site. So from here, I can now sync backwards. I'm going to sync, overwrite this collection with all the items that are in the live database right now. So I'm going to sync it, and now it's going to add all of the items that are visible from the live database. So that's how you work that. Now that I have a database with items in it, and I've already added my super fancy repeater, I'm going to click on the repeater. I'm going to connect to data. So I'm going to click on this icon. The first thing that we have to do is create a data set. This is the glue that connects the data from the page and pulls the information from the database. So I'm going to select the collection that I want to connect to, and it will be the gallery. It doesn't matter what the name is. It's just for your information. Now that I've connected the entire repeater, I can select specific fields from the database to connect to the items inside of the repeater. In my repeater, I only have two items. Let's first connect the image. I'm going to click on the database icon. The image will connect to image. The alt text will connect to the title. And nothing else. Now the button, I also want to connect it to something specific. I want to connect it to a dynamic page. But if you notice, I don't have a dynamic page available because I have not created it. So let's create that now. Very simple. Hover on top of the name of the gallery database. 
click on the settings, click add dynamic page. We're going to create a single item page to display one single item from the database. Because I don't want them to remember the URL, I'm going to choose something, I'm not going to choose the title, I'm going to choose the ID and I'm going to create the page. You can choose whatever you want for the URL ending, just select something from the drop down. Now that the page has been created, we're going to add text to the page. I'm going to add another piece of text. Now that I have my title and the note, I'm going to click anywhere on the page. And when I see this change page background, I'm not going to click on this. I'm actually going to click on the little database icon here to connect to data. Once I select that, I find the image and it's done. It's connected. So now this background will be the image itself. I do want to make sure that the inside of the page doesn't have any color. So I'm going to click on the little formatting tool. I'm going to click no color and I close that. Let me connect the title. And now I'm going to connect the note. I'm going to make these long enough to make sure that the title and the note actually fit. There we go. Now in my tutorial site, I added a button to the home page, so I'll do that here. And I will connect it the regular way. Link, home, and done. Now that I've created my dynamic page, I can link the image from my repeater through the database icon, selecting links to and selecting my dynamic page, as well as the button. I click on the button, I connect it to the database, and select the link to my dynamic page. Now all we need is code. So let me go to the tutorial site. I'm going to grab the code. I'm going to copy it. And inside of the dynamic page, where the actual image is located, is where I'm going to open up the code panel and paste the code. Now, if it, add, if it adds extra lines or anything else, feel free to fix it. If you're not OCD like me, that's fine. You can leave it alone. <laughs> what this code is saying is we're going to be importing the Wix location API. And when the page is finished loading, we want to get the item from the dynamic data set. That is the current item. We're going to call this item. And then from the item, the dot image that you see in the code is actually the name of the field that we created in the database. From the database, under the image column, if you click on the little dot dot dot, click on manage properties, and look under field key. Image is the field key for this image column. It is all lowercase letters. This corresponds to this part of the code. So we're going to get the item dot image, and this will be the picture. Then I'm going to get the URL of this picture, and I'm actually going to split it. I'm going to take the file name, which is the note. So from my database, I look under note, and this is the column that I'm going to be using for the name. So when that save pop-up window opens up automatically, this is the exact wording that will show up. Whatever you want the title to be or the default wording to be, select that column field key and add it to your code. Mine is note. And the last piece of code is actually the trigger that opens up the pop-up window for the specific image that is saved in your database with that specific name file derived from two pieces of information that you've written in the code above. The first piece is the part of the URL where the picture is currently being hosted. And the second piece is the file name. And that's the entire code. To make sure that it works for your database and your website, you need to change three things. One, the name of the data set 
that is in your dynamic page. If it's called hashtag dynamic data set, then that stays the same. If you have a different column with a different field key instead of image, type in the correct one for your database collection. And the same thing with the file name. If you're going to be using a different column that's not called note, then write it in there. And then your code should work perfectly fine. Would you like to test it? Let's publish. Now let's visit our site that we just created together. You'll see the big title up there. All of our images are there. Let's click one and voila. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe. If you have any questions, remember to join the Facebook group. Chances are somebody's already asked that same question that you have. The group is dedicated to all Wix code questions and you will find many Wix code users, Wix code experts, and even Wix developers. Of course, I'm also available for private tutoring. Find me on totallycodable.com, search for more resources, and keep an eye out for the Wix code basics course that will be released very, very soon. See you next time. Bye.